In this video, we're going to talk about arithmetic sequences and series. So whenever we talk about sequences, we need to know that we are talking about numbers that have a certain pattern. So there's a pattern between all the numbers. And whenever we talk about an arithmetic sequence in specifically, it means that the pattern between these numbers is that we are adding the same number between each of these terms. And these terms is the numbers that we're going to be talking about. And this value that we're going to be adding is called the common difference. And often you'll, use, you'll see the textbook use the letter D to talk about our common difference. Now for the IB, we have a formula that talks about any term, the nth term, in an arithmetic sequence. And you see this on your sheet of paper. Any term is un, so this we call the nth term. So if you're looking for the if you're looking for the tenth term, then this would be u10. If you're looking for the second term, this would be u2, and so on and so forth. So, so therefore, the u1 is our first term in our sequence, so the very first number. N refers to how many terms we have. So the number, so if we're talking about u10, well, the value of n would be 10. So it's the position in the sequence. So is it the first number, the second number? That's what the n value is. So I can write the position in our sequence. And finally, d is our common difference, and that is the number that's going to be added for each term. Now, the common difference can be negative, right? And if, if a sequence is decreasing, then we'll have a common difference, which is negative. Let's look at some examples together. The first sequence, we have 2, 8, 14, 20, and 26. In order to find the common difference, a trick, I would say, is always you can subtract, let's say, the second term by the first term. So, or you could subtract for example, 26 minus the term that came just before 26, which would be 20. So in our case, our common difference is going to be 6. Next, find the general rule for each of these. So the general rule using the rule in the IB formula booklet, we have that any general term un would be equal to our first term, 2, plus n minus 1 times our common difference. Now, if you leave your answer as such, that is absolutely fine for the IB. Or if you're somebody that likes to expand this, feel free to expand this as well. So we're going to distribute the 6, and then we would have un is equal to 6n plus 1. This is also an equivalent answer, but you do not need to have this answer on your sheet of paper. Let's look at our next example. This is an example where our sequence is decreasing. So we start at 50, then we go to 45, we go to 40. Therefore, the common difference in this case is going to be negative. In order to find the common difference, you can take any term and subtract it by the term that came before it. So we get that our common difference is negative 5. Therefore, the general term, un, and this is something that you might want to write down on your piece of paper whenever we're talking about general term, we're looking for un, is going to be our first term, 50 plus n minus 1 times our common difference. Now make sure here, since it's a negative, uh, you're putting your negative in brackets because you don't want this to look like n minus 1 minus 5. So you can write your equation as such, and that's absolutely fine for the IB. Or if you prefer, you can expand this. So we're going to get negative 5n plus 5. Therefore, our general rule would be negative 5n plus 55. Let's continue with our examples. Example 3. Consider the sequence 2, 9, 16, 23, and 30. So first, to show that the sequence is arithmetic. Whenever we're showing that something is arithmetic, we need to show that there is a common difference. So the objective here is to show a common difference. And the way that we write our common difference is we show that 
any, you choose any term, for example, 23, and 23 minus the term that came just before it should be the exact same thing as 9 minus 2. And in our case, it is. So 9 minus 2 is 7. 23 minus 16 is, in fact, 7. So we're showing that there is a common difference in our sequence. Therefore, it would be arithmetic. Part B. Find the formula for the general term un. General term un. We have this formula given to us in the formula booklet. So un would be equal to our first term, 2 plus n minus 1 times our common difference, which we found in part A, which is 7. You can write your equation like this. If you prefer, you can also write it by distributing the 7. And we get that our general term u is equal to 7n minus 5. Part C. C is now asking us for the 100th term. So this signifies that our value for n is going to be 100. So the 100th term, I replace n by 100 in my equation, and I solve for what that would be. And when you put this into your calculator, you get that the 100th term is going to be 695. And the last part of this question is asking, are the numbers 828 or 2,341 members of this sequence? In order for these numbers to be members of the sequence, there has to be a specific n value, um, in, and this n value needs to be an integer. So let's check if these numbers give us integer values for n. So let's start with 828. So if this is a member of my sequence, then when I make 828 equal to 2 plus n minus 1 times 7, the n value should be an integer. In order to do this, we can put this into numeric solve. So when you put this into numeric solve, you're going to get that n is equal to 119. Since this is an integer value, this means that 828 is a member of our sequence. And we can even say that it is the 119th number in this sequence. You can repeat the same thing for 2,341. Put this into numeric solve. And when you put this into numeric solve, it's going to give you that n is equal to 335, 1 fourth. Since n is not an integer value, this means that 2,341 is not a member of this sequence. Now let's do example two. The first term of an arithmetic sequence is 5, and the common difference is 2 over 3. Find the second and third term of the sequence. So if we have our first term, which is 5, then my second term I could find by simply having 5 plus 2 over 3. And when I put that into my calculator, I'm going to get 17 over 3. You can keep it as a fraction, that's not a problem. And then I can do the same thing for u3. Well, u3 is going to be our second term plus 2 over 3. So we're going to get 19 over 3 for the third term. Now for part b. Write down the expression for the nth term. Expression for the nth term, that's the same way of asking for a general term. So here they're looking for un. So un, we have our first term plus n minus 1 times our common difference of 2 over 3. Part C. Determine whether or not 49 over 3 is a term in the sequence. So 49 over 3 is equal to 5n minus 1, and this is times 2 over 3. Put this into numeric solve and answer the question, is this a part of our term? Now that you've put it into numeric solve, you saw that the value of n was 18. Therefore, this is a term in our sequence. And finally, the last question, d. 
find the first term of a sequence which is greater than 25. So the first thing that I would do is I would set up my uh, general term equation 5 plus n minus 1 times 2 over 3. I would make this equal to 25. By doing this, I'm going to get, putting this into numeric solve, that n is equal to 31. This means that my 31st term is 25. So find the first term of this sequence that is greater than 25. Well, that's going to be the next term that follows 25. So it's going to be 25 plus 2 over 3 is going to be my next term, which is um, bigger than. So the 32nd term, let me move this. So the 32nd term will be 25 plus 2 over 3. Now we're going to move gears a little bit and talk about a series. Um, the reason I'm putting these two together is that arithmetic se sequences is something that you studied in grade 10. So we are moving fast through this. Now series, series are really interesting because instead of just putting the sequence, so the numbers following each other, the series we're looking at the sum of the terms in a sequence. Therefore, we're going to be using a different letter. The sum is going to be SN. So capital S and then subscript N is going to be what we're going to use for the sum. And this is going to be the first S1 is going to be the first term of our sequence, of course. And then if we have, so let me write it here, S1 would be the first term of my sequence. S2 would be the first term plus the second term of the sequence. S3 would be U1 plus U2 plus U3. So I'm going to be adding up all the terms of the sequence until that n value that we get, right? So if I write a general equation for Sn, it's going to be U1 plus U2 plus U3 plus until we reach Un, which is going to be the last term that we're adding up together. Um, and what we need to know is the sigma notation, because that's what we're going to be using in this IB course. Sigma notation refers to a summation. So this symbol here is a Greek symbol that means summation. So we're going to be adding up. Uh, the term is called sigma, if you're interested in Greek. Sigma, and it means we're going to be summing, adding up together. What are we going to add up? Well, the bottom number, which is always going to be 1 for us, is where we start. So this is the starting term. The top number is where we stop, so the end term. So in this case, we're adding up terms 1 all the way to term 3. And what are we adding up? What goes on the right of the sigma notation is the sequence. So this is the sequence that we're going to be adding up together. And let's do some examples to make sense of this. Before we do some examples, uh, I'm sharing with you the formula booklet. So in the formula booklet for the sum of the nth term in an arithmetic sequence, we have two formulas. The first formula here is using um, the common difference, the value of n, of course, and the first term. The second formula uses also the first term, but instead of using the common difference, it uses the last term in our sequence. So depending on the question we're going to have, one of these two formulas will be better to use than the other one. If we know the common difference, then we'll want to use this formula. If we know the last term in the sequence, then we'll want to use this formula. Let's look at example one. Find the sum of the first 20 terms in this sequence. 
So first, let's identify this sequence. So if we look at this sequence, 3 plus 6 plus 9, this refers to the sequence 3, 6, 9, etc., etc., where the first term is equal to 3, and the common difference is also equal to 3. So I'm adding 3 between each term. Therefore, if I'm looking for the sum of the first 20 terms, that means I'm looking for S20. Looking at the two formulas I have on top, it's easier for me to use the first formula because I know the first term and I know the common difference. So let's go ahead and use that equation. We're going to have 20, which is the value of n, divided by 2, times 2 times the, common the first term, which is 3, plus 20 minus 1 times the common difference, which is 3. You're going to put this into your calculator, and you're going to get the value of 630. So adding up the first 20 terms of this sequence gives us 630. Part B, find the sum of the first 100 terms, and now they're giving us a different sequence. So this is the sequence we're now dealing with. In this case, we need to choose which of the two formulas we want to use. Since this uh, equation is not given to me in the normal way that the IB gives me the um, arithmetic sequence, it's harder to know what the common difference is. But I would be able to easily find the 100th term, which would be the last term I'm looking for. So if I substitute 100 in here, I'm going to get that the last term, the 100th term, is equal to negative 299. Therefore, for finding the sum of the first 100 terms, it's going to be easier for me to use the second equation. So I'm going to have 100 divided by 2 times first term, Oh, the first term we have to find as well. So u1 is equal to negative 3 times 1 plus 1. So the first term is negative 2 plus the last term, which is negative 299. And when you put that into your calculator, you're going to get that the sum of the first 100 terms is negative 15,050. So this is a perfect example where the second formula was more useful. And then we're going to do the last part, part C. They're giving us a different series. So we have 88 plus 17 plus 26 plus dot dot dot. They give us the last term. So this here is the very last term, un. And 8 is our first term. And they're asking us to tell us what is the value of this. The only issue here is that we do not know how many terms there are. So we notice that there is a plus and then dot, dot, dot. This tells us that we don't know how many terms there are. So in order for me to be able to use my sum of the nth terms, I need to know how many terms I'm adding up together. So the first step to this question is I need to find n. I need to find how many terms there are. And the way that we do that is we're using the arithmetic sequence. So the sequence is 8, 17, 26, dot, dot, dot. Meaning that my first term is 8. And then to find the arithmetic sequence, we can do um, 17 minus 8. So my common difference is going to be 9. So that means that I can write any generic term in this sequence as 8 plus n minus 1 times 9. So let's go find out what is the uh, position of the term 143. So 143 is equal to 8 plus n minus 1 times 9. You're going to put this into numeric solve and you're going to find that n is equal to 16. So therefore, there are 16 terms in that I'm adding together. So from 8 all the way to 143, there are 16 terms here. 
So now I have all the information I need to find the sum of the first 16 terms, which will be the answer of what is 8 plus 17 plus 24 all the way to plus 143. So I'm going to use this second equation here because I have u1 and I have un and I know now that n is equal to 16. So 16 divided by 2, my first term is 8, my last term is 143. When you put this into the calculator, you should get 1208. Now for homework, I would like you to do question 2 and we're going to look at this in class.